What's up everybody? I'm Luke with Ride Bikes More and I am here in San Antonio, Texas for a bike interview. We were going to ride but the weather isn't permitting. But before I get started I want to say special thank you to Mojeta Cycling for giving me the opportunity to come and speak with them. If you're not already make sure you follow because it makes you feel good. Mm. Hi I'm Alex. I'm Katie. I'm Natalie, Andrea, Angela, and Alexis. So my name is Andrea. Um, I've been riding actually over 10 years now. So I've been here in San Antonio since for about nine years. Um, I first started as a bike commuter, riding to school, things like that. Definitely cycling has grown a lot since I started out. I would say it's a mixed bag in terms of the the structure of the city infrastructure, I wouldn't say it's gotten a lot better over the years. We still have a lot of debris in the bike lanes, things like that. In terms of the size of the cycling community, like cyclists on the road, it's definitely grown. San Antonio does have its uh, fair share of like fatalities when it comes to cycling. There's been many like close friends of the cycling community that have been killed and so I did want to bring light to that. So, so I have been the San Antonio cycling community page and one of the biggest booms in membership that we had was, was with the death, death of a female cyclist and you know it was a negative action that happened but one of the positive reactions was that so many people from the cycling community did come out and show face and brought awareness to so many people that do care and are affected by these situations and it did end up in a positive outcome that people were joining the page people were reaching out to each other and finding these groups that they could ride with and feel safe with I have very different opinions. I am a fixed gear rider, so um, brakes are optional for me. You need to have a helmet. You need to have lights. Um, that's a bare minimum. I'm a cycling advocate for uh, accessibility. Fixed gear single speed bikes can be the most easiest and affordable to maintain, so you can get away with a lot less. Of course, there's the other direction. You can soup up with carbon where you have you know, your speed equipment as well. It's really fun. But ultimately, I believe you need a helmet and lights and a good bike, ABCs, air, brakes, chain, all of that. You know, fixed gear, brakes are optional. <laughs> Having a flat kit is super, super important. There's always people to help you if you're on a group ride. It's great, but if you're out there solo and you get a flat, you're SOL if you don't have a kit on you. Uh, so a flat kit consists of a little bag that you can strap to your bike and it's got tire levers, a spare tube, some CO2 or a little mini pump, just something to kind of fix your flat on your own and get you back on the road nice and safe. Not only that, it's like you have to have the knowledge of like changing the flat. So that's like another really important piece to it. How, on a skill level from one to 10, 10 being the hardest, how hard is changing a flat on your own? I mean, I, I feel like I'm, kind of a novice rider. I started riding like a couple of years ago. I guess now maybe like a five, maybe sometimes it can be hard, but not too bad. Some rapid fire questions. Bike type. Fixie. Road. 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 Fixie. Price range. Uh, it just depends on the bike, whatever you're willing to spend. Like ditto, because like, yeah, you don't want to spend too much, but you want a quality bike. So always look for a deal but never go for the first price haggle would you consider a used bike absolutely whatever fits your budget shop used first yeah. whatever fits your budget for sure <laughs> same budget but minimum i'm gonna say a bike around 230 250 will probably take you a long way especially if it's a fixie <laughs> <laughs> Bike fits are expensive, so if you can afford it, do it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. If you can afford it, do it. Uh, I mean, we fit our own bikes here, but there's a few of us that have them. So new riders, will you help them fit their bike? <sighs> Man, I always do the, I'm, with new riders, I always give them the like a little step-by-step, -step, like measure your hip bone and then put your, as long as your leg swings over the, <laughs> the middle, you're good. That's my, that's my, that's my go-to. Uh, if you can afford it, do it. Otherwise, YouTube is a huge resource. Very good. I agree. Ditto, agree with that. I tend to lead toward the professional just because they know a lot more than I do, and I'm wrong on my bike a lot, so I want to make sure it's fit correctly. Oh, my thing. Don't, if you're in pain, something's not right on your bike. Get it fit, fitted and fixed. Yeah, bike fit will hugely affect the quality of your riding ex experience. 
I like group rides, but solo is fun too. I prefer solo. I like group rides. Group rides. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Love a group ride with a chase. Yes. Will my butt hurt? Uh, yes. <laughs> Get used to it. And what do you... Get used to it. Yeah. Yes. At first, yeah. Not if you wear padded shorts. Might not. Yeah, it just depends. It depends on how well your bike fits and what kind of equipment you've got. Yeah, if you're investing time in the saddle, invest in some padded bike shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Will my legs get big? Uh, yeah, maybe. It did. Everybody's body's different. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. A little. They might, but you're also going to get super strong. Good point. Again, advocating for fixies out there. If you want your legs to be big, ride a fixed gear. Big ratio. <laughs> Will I fall? Yes, and just accept it. It's going to happen. Yes, you will fall. Yeah, part of the fun. You might fall. I wouldn't say it's a guaranteed part of the riding. Very likely you're going to fall. Hey, sometimes you're going to fall clipped in at a standstill, and sometimes you're going to fall turning a corner. It's going to happen, but you're going to get back up. I recently fell. My bike had an accident. An incident. Tips for getting comfortable riding in the streets. Listen to yourself, for sure. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. Very good. Start in the bike lanes. Start riding in the bike lanes, then if you need to move over into the main road, move over to the main road, but stay in the bike lane. Just get out there. You'll get used to it. Yeah, get out there, use the bike lanes. Lots of practice and ride with people you trust. Definitely use the bike lanes. My sister-in-law, Laura, who's not here right now, how dare you, her and I co-founded the ride. Basically, we were looking for women's team to train, something that was develop developmental to get us from being more like mid-speed to get us to going a little bit faster. When we started Mujeres, there was no women's developmental team to steer us in that direction. There was a bunch of male dominated teams here in San Antonio and we were just looking for a team that we could ride with get faster together we got so lucky with a core team that has been so amazing and just willing to take on different projects and start doing different things go on different rides work with different groups so we have definitely seen a huge growth in women cyclists women that want to be faster get faster get stronger on the bike we've seen them come out we've seen them you know, like Angela, who started riding with the babes and then came on t with us and now she's leading rides out, you know, so we we did what we uh, what we wanted to set out and accomplish. We meet here at Blue Star Bike Shop on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. right now. And then going back into the fall, we'll start meeting again at 630 here. Like cycling can just be a portion of your like activity, you know, you can cross train. I love to trail run, hike, swimming's really good. So all those like activities will only enhance your strength on the bike for sure yeah so i started um august of 2020 covid covid rider just trying to get active out there you know when we were in lockdown started out on the trails i would start at five miles or 10 miles and just keep pushing and pushing until you know i started riding with some group rides and just the consistency and just not being afraid to go out and get dropped and to just chase people is how I've gotten a lot stronger. And so the endurance comes there and you're able to ride longer, ride faster. And so now we can, you know, easily go out and do the 26 miles. So and we just recently did the Katy Flatland, which was a hundred miles over in Katy, Texas. And that was my second century. And it was, it was a great ride because it, there was a core group of us that went and we all stayed together. We rotated, we made sure everybody finished at the same time. And so we all supported each other. So that was a wonderful ride. In the beginning of a ride, I always tell myself, don't hit it hard. Just stay, just stay, keep the pace, keep it, keep it steady, keep it steady. On the way back, don't lose the wheel, don't lose the wheel, don't lose the wheel. Because it's going so fast that you don't have enough time to sometimes look around you. Sometimes we'll see, we'll see stuff on rides when we're going slower and we're like, where did that come from? Because we're not paying attention, we're going so fast. And so your mentality is like, light or die, let's just, let's keep, keep their wheel and steady the pace, so. I think the key is mentality, like focusing and being determined, you know, because your mind can take you a lot further than you think, you know, your body, you feel like you're gonna give out and you can't do it anymore, but it's, you're 
that's what I wanted to say. Your body is more capable than you think. And so you're, that can take you a lot farther if your mentality is in the right space. My pre-ride ritual is making sure my headphones are charged because if I don't have my music, my mental headspace is filled with a lot of other things and the music keeps, helps to keep me going during my ride. Um, it's part of what keeps me positive, especially during those harder, longer rides. Um, and towards the end, you do get to a point where you see someone that's like a dot in the distance and you just lock in on them and after that you're just hyper focusing on finishing. Listening to music, having headphones is something that might be kind of controversial, especially when you're riding in a group. What, what are your thoughts on that? I personally keep one headphone out and on the dominant side, like I, I keep this side um, so that I can hear everybody. I normally stay to the right of the line, so I keep my free ear to them so that I can hear the traffic, I can hear their calls. I, I mean, I do listen to music, but I've had experiences where you're trying to tell a ride or something and like they can't hear you. I'm like, hello, <laughs> yeah. trying to tell you something. Oh. So I do, I definitely do at least have one out and make sure you can hear other riders communicating or cars. You know, you need to balance both those things. come out, challenge yourself. Uh, don't be afraid to get dropped. Uh, we are a drop ride, but we sweep these rides all the time. Like nobody stays behind. Nobody is alone. We will, no matter what, we will find you someone to ride with you back. Uh, but come challenge yourself, come out. Um, like Alex said, it's all mental. You can keep saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. But until you come do it, you won't know if you can't do it or not. So just come do it. For newbies and for drivers, if you see people on the road and you think of us, great, maybe come out and join us. If you see people on the road cycling, think of us, look out for us. Think of these ladies here. It could be any one of us. It could be any one of your friends. Just keep us in your minds when you see us on the road, either if it's to watch out for us or to join us. We are allowed to be on the road. That we are a vehicle and we, we have the right to be there. So you may not like it, but you have to watch out for us and just be mindful. Uh, we chose this spot because Blue Star Bike Shop is one of our sponsors. Hey, Blue Star. Yeah, they help us out with a lot of stuff, um, getting our bikes, you know, having a maintained bike is also really important and also fueling us and things like that. So I just want to highlight them for all their support. If you're a femme in the cycling community and you're like any one of us who started riding with a bunch of dudes, uh, find your tribe find a group of ladies that you can ride with if you're in the San Antonio area come find us on a Tuesday night we are at Mujeres Cycling on Facebook and Instagram yes and there's a ton of uh, amazing cycling groups here in San Antonio I just want to give shout outs to uh, Zombies, Colvita, Cannibal, Fast Times, uh, Chain Reaction, anyone else? Any other shout outs? Team Taco at the Mission Relay. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Mission Relay on the Mission Relay. Relay. Any other shout outs? Oh, San Antonio uh, Psychedelic Cycling Club. I could not have said it better. I'm Luke for Ride Bikes More and we are out. Ooh.